Today I'm going to be going through the review question by question just to make sure that you understand how to do each of these individual problems correctly. So starting with number one, it says apply the distributive property. We are going to use the distributive property on questions A and B. Remember distributive property is you take the number in front and you multiply it with both numbers inside those parentheses. So we go pew, five times four is 20. Don't forget the variable plus pew, five times six is 30. And it's plus because of that plus sign in the middle. B, we're gonna take the three out front and multiply it with things inside. So pew, three times K, smush them together, three K minus sign, so minus, Pew, three times two is six. Now, letter C, we're actually going to factor. So we're gonna turn it into questions that look like A and B. So we wanna find what do they have in common? What are my leftovers? 15 and 20, the biggest number they both divide by is five. That's what they have in common. So if I would divide it by five, my leftover for 15X divided by five is three X plus sign, so plus, divide by five. My leftover on the second term is four. So my answer is five, parenthesis, three x plus four, close parenthesis. Now for number two, it says simply simplify. So we are going to apply the distributive property, then combine like terms. This is like lesson number five, day two, if you need to go back and look at your notes. So we're gonna start with distributing five times 10 is 50 plus five times four is 20, don't forget the M, recopy everything else. Then I ask myself, what's the same? What are alike? Well, I have an M and an M, and it says we're going to be adding, because it's 20 plus seven. So I have 20, oh, that's wrong, 27 M's, and then don't forget we have that positive 50. M and 50 are not alike, so I can't put that together anymore. That's simply my answer. Letter B, I don't have anything to distribute, so I just say what's the same that I can put together. I have a Y and another Y. We always take the sign in front, so it's adding. So I had six Ys plus five Ys is 11 Ys. And then I have a 26 and I have a 10. And looking at my sign, I have a positive 26, and then this says to minus 10. So 26 take away 10 is 16, and it's a positive 16 that I'm left with. C, distribute first. Pew, four times six is 24, don't forget the H. Minus, pew, four times two is eight. And then recopy, that says minus 12H. Now put a like things together. I have an H and I have an H. When I look at the signs, I have a 24 and then it says to take away 12. 24 minus 12, I'm left with 12 H's. Copy the rest, minus eight. Letter D, put things that are the same together. So, ooh, hold on though. Look at, we have parentheses, so we gotta do this first. Order of operations, P, E, M, D, A, S. You gotta do that parentheses first, so we have to subtract here first. So we're gonna do 23x minus 11x plus, well, 13 minus 10 is three squared. I copied everything except I did my parentheses. Now I still have exponents, so I have to figure this out. Three squared means three two times, three times three. So I have 23x minus 11x plus, well, three times three is nine. Now I can finally put my things that are the same together, those like terms. I have an x and an x. And we are just gonna simply take 23 minus 11. 23 minus 11 is 12x, and then copy everything else, that plus nine. 12x and nine aren't the same, so they're not gonna be put together. And then last but not least, letter E. Distribute first, pew, five times two is 10x, pew, five times three is 15, there's a plus sign in the middle, copy the rest, minus 4x squared plus 3x. Now think about what's the same. Well, I have an x 
and an x. This 4x squared is not the same because it has a power on it. So I'm not going to put it together. I'm going to do the 10x plus 3x. That's 13x. And then I have a 15 and I have a 4x squared. They're not the same, so I'm just going to recopy both. And I'm going to just do it in order. So plus 15 minus 4x squared. None of those are the same anymore. They're not alike, so I can't put them together anymore. That's simply my answer. Do not oversimplify on number two. For number three, it says write the algebraic expression for each situation. Algebraic expression means math problem. So think about annotating as we read. Difference means to subtract of nine and a number. I don't know that number, so we use a variable. So I'm going to subtract 9 minus a number, which I'm going to call x, because I don't know what it is. If you chose a different letter, that's fine, but you cannot put a number there. It has to be just a variable. The product, which means to multiply a number, and they told us what letter to use, n25. So they say multiply n and 25. Remember, when we multiply a number and a variable, we prefer the number then the variable just smushed together. So this first one's okay, but the second one is the best answer. C, the number of minutes left on a plan, so we're gonna use our variable, after using 79 minutes. So the number of minutes left after using 79 minutes. So we have all of our minutes, take away those 79 that we used, and then we have whatever is left. And then 15 cents per, per is a multiplication word, plus add $20, $20 service fee. I don't know how many texts I sent, so that's my variable. So I have 0 0.15 texts plus, and they're being multiplied, so I don't put a multiply symbol, I just smush them together. So plus the $20 fee. The last two are a little tricky, but I know you guys can do them. Now number four says write the expression in words. So you're going to write a sentence for me. X minus 19. There's a bunch of different ways of writing that, but you need to use some word that means to subtract. So we could say X minus 19 as one option. The difference of X and 19 take away 19 from x, all would work. And then that second one, remember when it looks like a fraction, that's a division problem, so we have to use a division word. So I'm going to say the quotient, that means division, of x, top number, and 2. It always has to be top, then bottom in order. Number 5, it costs $50.00 to rent this swimming pool plus $8 per person. So think about our keywords right there. Plus means to plus, and per means to multiply. So those are really important words. First, we need to write the math problem for N people. So it's $50 to rent plus $8 per person. And they said to use an N, so we'll change my P to an N. So it's 50 plus 8N. 8 is being multiplied with the N, so we just smush them together. If you want to throw the time symbol in there like I did, that little dot, that's okay. What is the cost of renting the pool? I've got to switch that for 25 people. So this is how many people I have as 25. So I'm going to put 25 in for my variable. 50 plus 8 times 25. Order of operations, we multiply first. So 8 times 25 is 200. And then we have to add 50. So it would cost $250. And then number 6. Katie is planning out her puppy kennel. She decides that her puppy kennel will be square. So let's draw a picture. Here's my square kennel. Okay. She decides the length of the square kennel will be 20 feet. And because it's a square, I know my other side will also be 20 feet. She said the area is 40. Determine if she's correct. Well, I know to find area, we do length times width. 
So to find the area, I would do 20 times 20, which I know is 400. So is she correct? Nope, she's not correct. And then you can write Y, knowing that it should have been 400, not 40. So make sure you give me a nice sentence explaining what she did wrong. And then lastly, number seven, Cassie is saving her money to buy a new iPod, which is $300. She has already saved $60 and she earns $80 per week babysitting and wants to know how many weeks it will take to earn this. So make a table showing her savings account. So I like this tables to start always. So if I think about this at zero weeks before she starts, how much money did she already have? Well, it told us in our sentence, she already had $60. Now, every week she's going to add $80 to her account. So after one week, she's going to add $80. And how much money does she have now? Well, she had $60 plus another $80. Now she's at $140. And then by week two, she's going to add another $80. So she's at $140 plus $80 is 220. Week three, she adds another 80, 300. Week four, she adds another 80, 380. And week five, she adds another 80, which is 460. Now, I only needed $300 for that iPod touch. So look at, I found that directly sitting in my table. We know how many weeks it will take, but now I need to do more math with this. B, show the relationship between the number of weeks and her savings using an equation. Equation means we have an equal sign. I know I need to equal $300 to get this iPod. What she does is she has 60 and then she's adding $80 every week. Remember, we have to have a variable in here, and that variable is going to be how many weeks because we didn't know until we made the table. That's what's changing. And then part C says use your equation to figure out how many weeks you will have to work to earn to buy the iPod. So think about this, and we know because this is your advanced question. I'm not going to give it away. I want to know if you could solve this equation. So I'm going to draw a line if that helps you at all. But we know from our table it would be three weeks. And so if you can figure out how to solve this with your equation, that would be even better.